All right, ready to go. First and foremost, thank you everyone for uh, joining us this evening. And thank you for Mary Beth for organizing the information session for parents. Uh, my name is Ken Janzerk, Director of Special Programs for Clarkston. Uh, tonight we're here to talk about Clarkston Virtual, but more importantly, we're here to talk about Pearson Connexus, our online platform for students oh. in grades six through 12. Uh, for the 2021 school year, we're going to have right around 700 6th through 12th grade students utilizing this online platform, supported by Clarkston teacher mentors. Even though I've shared previously through public meetings, uh, these Clarkston teacher mentors are going to be supporting students both educationally and social emotionally. We've talked about the aspects of what they're going to be doing during the week to support students socially. More importantly, we're going to be talking about what teachers are going to be doing through Clarkston to support students um, with their education, support students through the online platform. Um, as early as this week, you're going to be hearing from all of your mentors and early next week, you're going to have a time where they're going to set up that first social emotional connection to really connect with students. Um, and then we'll go and continue to offer additional information. Um, as we go throughout the evening, like Mary Beth had stated, please make sure that you put your comments in the chat and everything that we don't answer, I'll make sure that we also add into the website for later. Uh, so without taking any much more of your time, I wanted to introduce Mary Beth, who's going to talk a little bit more about Pearson Connexus and how, what it's going to do for Clarkston Virtual. Thank you. Um, so I just want to explain a little bit about what the platform is all about, and then I'm actually going to go into the platform so that you can see um, what this actually looks like and understand how to navigate through. So first of all, just at a high level, um, this is a world-class education experience that provides you and your child with an easy to use online learning system, quality curriculum, and individualized attention from your district teachers, as well as a safe and secure learning environment. I muted myself, I apologize. Um, we serve all types of students really, um, but the, the neat thing about this is that the program is very flexible. There is some scheduling through the program, but you also do have some flexibility as to when your child learns during the day. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to accommodate sports when they come back, um, music lessons and other activities without actually falling behind. And, and we'll talk a little bit about the scheduler um, during the presentation or during the demo. Um, I think this is really my, one of my favorite slides because it really just kind of puts everything in perspective. All of these elements are part of your child's learning experience. So when you take a look really up at the center of, the, of the, um, this, this little icon, the student is in the center, right? So we know that this, everything that we're doing is about how we can provide the best opportunity and the best education experience for the child. Up in the left, the caretakers are a very important uh, part of this. So a caretaker is a parent, a guardian, a neighbor, a friend, um, a grandparent who's supporting the child at home. Um, that student needs encouragement. That student needs someone who's their cheerleader. And while your, your students will have interaction with certified teachers, you as a parent, learning coach, caretaker at home are a big part of, this, of your child's education. Down in the lower left, the teachers have the opportunity to personalize lessons. They're going to provide your student with feedback, assistance. Um, they're gonna check in with your students. They're going to present um, and be a big part of your child's learning experience. Certainly in the upper right, the curriculum um, is very important. Um, it is an online digital curriculum. It is not a textbook with a, as a PDF where your child just trolls through it. There's a lot of interactive media, uh, multimedia content um, there are lots of resources for your child and um, different opportunities to learn um, both on and offline. And all this is brought together by the platform that we affectionately call Connexus EMS. Um, sometimes people just call it Connexus, sometimes people call it Pearson Connexus, uh, but it is one and the same. And we'll show that to you in a moment, but it really brings everything together from the curriculum to the grade book, to the scheduling, to communication with your teachers. Um, everything is built into the, the platform itself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the curriculum. Um, first of all, I think this is super important that, you know, 21st century skills are a critical thinking and problem solving, communication, creativity and innovation and collaboration. And our online curriculum is 
a resource that will encourage your child to build and develop these, um, these skills. So when your child leaves high school and is ready to go on to college, career, um, a, you know, whatever it is, they are ready for what the world brings them. Lots of core world language and elective courses. Obviously core is ELA, social studies, science, um, and math. And then electives um, abound, world languages. There are lots of CTE courses available for your students, um, gifted and talented, honors, AP, um, health and PE, really the gamut of courses that your students will be able to choose from. And you'll be working with your district to, um, to, to identify what those courses are. Assessments tests, quizzes, all built into the platform itself. Um, some of the projects and lessons are hands-on. Um, everything is aligned to common core standards and Michigan standards um, so that the courses are definitively high quality and um, aligned to ensure that your student is progressing the way that the country and the state wants them to progress. So I'm going to sh stop sharing for a second and I'm going to then start sharing um, my other screen and show you Pearson Connexus. All right, can everybody see this? Sarah, can? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So um, this is what a student login looks like. So Charlie is my student up here. Charlie is um, a high school student. He is enrolled in many courses and you're gonna see those courses here. These tiles represent each course that your student is enrolled in. This is a demo. So there is not a ton of data in here, but I'm going to point out the functionality and share with you what your students will be seeing when they actually enroll or when they're actually enrolled in the program and there are start and end dates assigned to the courses and they start to get into the courses and they're doing their work. Just starting at the top, there are, there's an opportunity for your student to adjust the settings of this. They can change the background color, they can reorder the tiles, they can create an avatar or throw a picture up here of themselves. So they can kind of customize this to make this their own. We know that students want to know a couple things. One, they wanna be able to talk to their teachers and get announcements and information from their teachers. Two, they want to be able to um, understand what their grades are. And three, they wanna know what they have to do on a regular basis. So we're gonna cover all those things. First of all, up here is a little uh, exclamation point. This is where a student might find announcements from their teachers or from the district, from um, any of the team members or mentors um, about the program, about the course. They can also find that here in the activity stream um, again, it's a demo, so there's not a lot of data here, but it might show an announcement about a test coming up next week, and the teacher has office hours to drop in and learn a little bit more about mitosis because you might not have understood mitosis, and that's what the test is about. So again, there's lots of opportunities here um, in the announcement section or in the activity stream, or actually over here on the left navigation to see the specific announcements about the courses. Um, the students can also communicate with their teachers via webmail. There's a link here. This, there's an internal webmail system built into the platform that allows the student to communicate with his or her teachers um, and be able to answer any questions that they have, make appointments with them, um, address anything that they need to address. When it comes to the to-do list, what is coming up? What does the student have to work on? There are a few ways that the student can find this out. First of all, there is a list within the course, and I'll show you that in a moment. Second of all, there's a list here that would with activities that the student has to do. Um, this is a demo without dates in, inserted, so there's nothing here, but this tab is a, is a resource for the student. And finally, there is a calendar that's available for the student as well. So the calendar will have all the student's courses listed, and the student can identify by day, by week, or by month how he or she wants to see the activities that she has or he has. So during this week, it normally would populate a list of all the things that the student needs to work on and what the dates are that they're due. Sometimes this is overwhelming to a student and they might just wanna say, I just wanna look at English. So let me unselect all these other things and just look at my list here, that's gonna show up, um, of all the things I need to do for my English class. The student can actually 
click on any of those things and go right into the course to start learning, or they can go in another way, which I'll show you in a minute. So again, there's a calendar resource for the student, or there is that list, um, that to-do list that appears here and will populate when all of the start and end dates and the, you know, this, the system is set up for your student. Um, a couple of other things I wanna point out on this navigation before we jump into a course, um, the grade book, right? This is what we know the kids wanna know how they're doing. So the grade book is um, going to show you all of the students courses that, he or she, that, that they're enrolled in. Um, it's going to show their score. It's gonna show how they've progressed through the course. And you can actually click on any of these to see specifically how a student has performed in any activity or any lesson, when it was due, was it submitted on time or not, um, and what was the score. And you can actually even drill down further and see any submission history. Um, all of that would be here if the student had submitted work. So there's lots of detail within this grade book. Um, a few other things too. So as a, I will say that the teachers and the administrators in your program have the same insight. So when the teachers are taking a look at how Charlie is doing, the teachers are going to see his grade, they're going to be able to see the scores and everything that he's done here, but they also might wanna take a look at all of his information here. Um, so they can click on any of these other things up here. Um, what if will allow you to actually determine what it's going to take to um, change a grade. So if the student has a 75 and wants to get an 80, they can pre-populate upcoming assignments and assessments and recalculate their score here to understand what that's going to take. The teacher has the same view and might decide that this is a discussion that they're going to have in a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, another thing that's up here, this activities tab, is going to show the student, the parent, the teacher, the administrator, anybody, um, how long your student is working in your course. So if your student has a test and maybe doesn't do so well, the teacher's gonna like take a look at this and they're gonna see how much time Charlie spent in the course. Was he really trying or maybe was he not trying so much? And each of those conversations are very different, right? If Charlie's trying and has spent a lot of time in the course but still didn't do so well, that's a conversation that really is going to be more about learning and content and making sure he understands a concept when Charlie might not have spent a lot of time in the course and didn't do so well, that conversation is more about um, you know, dedication and, and time and investing in, in, in the learning. Um, objective mastery. So obviously there are objectives throughout the course. You, you and your student can see how they're doing against the objectives. The teachers are looking at this very closely. You wanna make sure the students are progressing through. Um, so there's lots of data here from the grade book specifically. Um, you as a student um, slash as a parent can log attendance and I'm sure um, your administrators will share with you a little bit more about how they want to handle this, but there is an opportunity to log attendance in the platform as well. Um, and there's also an opportunity to take notes in the course, which I'll show you in a moment, but you can access those notes from there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the courses themselves. So this, obviously these are tiles that are individual courses. Um, a couple of things that you will be able to see from these tiles. First of all, you'll be able to see your current score. So how are you doing right here? Um, you'll be able to click here and go into that grade book that we just saw. You'll be able to see the progress that you've made in the course. So how far along are you? And then you can actually simply click on the tile and go right into the course itself. So this is what a course looks like. Um, we'll go into a lesson in a moment, but I wanna share a few things here. So we talked a little bit about the to-do list, right? We have the calendar, we have the, um, the to-do list from the main page, and then there's a to-do list here within the course as well that will populate activities that are due. The student can see what they last worked on and what's coming up next. This is a demo and I can go out of order, which is why this looks funny, but your student cannot, right? They have to progress in order. Um, so they would be on lesson 213 yesterday, and today they're gonna, Start working on lesson 214. Each course comes with a course overview. And the course overview is just gonna have a description of what this course is about and a high level review of the units. There's also a course guide, which really is like a syllabus where the student will understand a little bit more about what's covered in each unit, 
and the, object, the objectives in each unit, objectives by lesson, et cetera. So there's lots of detail here for you as a parent and also for your student to understand what's going to happen in the course. Um, each course has a backpack. So there are certain things in here like glossary terms. You might wanna remind yourself of um, different words that are used throughout the course. There are course. There's a course materials list that's provided. This is an online textbook, so it will be included in the platform itself and there are no need for additional materials. We get a lot of questions about um, what kind of materials do my children need. If you were going to a brick and mortar and you had a school supply list from the district and you needed glue and a protractor and some colored pencils and whatever you needed, you would buy something, you would have a similar list for this, right? So if you were taking traditional courses, um, you're taking maybe an art class or your, your math class might need a compass or whatever, you know, um, you would just use that same list of supplies. So the backpack is a great resource as well. Um, if your student has completed an activity, you're going to see a green check here. That means the lesson has been complete. Normally you would see green checks all the way down here because the student's gonna go in order, but I wanna point out the green check so that you'll know that kind of it shows you where your place is in, in, the, in the course itself. Um, but I'm gonna just go into a course just so you can kind of, or a lesson just so you can kind of see this this is um, lesson 213. You'll see we're in the world history course. This is the unit. You can always go back up. And this is the lesson, or this is the um, kind of the, the group lesson within the unit. Um, before we get into the actual content here, I want to point out a few things. This little ear up here is a text to speech feature. And it allows your student to highlight of words, sentences, paragraphs, and have them read out loud. Why is culture important? Um, they can highlight a word if they aren't sure of what the word means, and they can have it defined. What is culture? It's the way people live. If they need the word translated, they can translate the word into um, one of five other languages. And all of that can be set in the settings here. So there's translations from six languages to five other languages. Um, so that resource is certainly available to you as well. Um, there's not going to be a lot of text on the page. Obviously, these are students that are very capable of reading and learning on their own. Um, so there is some, you know, there's a decent amount of text, but it's not pages and pages and pages of text all the time. There are videos and other things embedded in the course. Um, and so this course specifically actually won an award in virtual education. Um, if you didn't know there was such a thing, there is. Um, but this really won, and this won an award, and it really they're talking in this unit about culture and the importance of culture. And the student is going to read some information here and then is going to discuss something with a partner. A partner could be a parent, it could be a sibling, um, it could be just them thinking in their head and answering a question. Or maybe they jot that question down and then they can check their answer by clicking on this link and they'll see, all right, this is the answer to the question. This is a possible answer. And maybe they're discussing that with their parent or their partner or a friend who's also taking the course. Um, they would mark this activity complete, but you see it's already been marked complete. So that's why there's a green check there. Um, and then they would come over here and go back to the, to the lesson itself and mark that activity complete. Then they would move on to the next activity. And the next activity actually has a video in it. So the student's going to um, read this. There are a couple questions that are being posed to the student going to watch the video and then they're going to go again and answer some questions again maybe on a piece of paper or in their head but they're just going through this thought process within the course using not just text but there are videos etc embedded this is just an example of one course um, all the courses are formatted in a similar way with text with videos with interactive activities um, that your student can learn from they can take notes in the course i mentioned that before this little post-it note will pop out on the side and the student can make notes here and they can actually go back to the main navigation and click on the notes tab and they'll see any notes that they've made in their courses. So obviously we've been playing in here. There are some notes in the geometry class. They can click on this and go right back to the lesson itself. Um, they were in the course guide and they made some notes and they'll be able to see what that is. So um, again, from the navigation, they can get to those notes. So this is, again, the home page um, where your student will see his or her courses. They can reorder the courses if they, choose, if they like to work on English first and they want that on the left. 
Um, they can do a couple things to customize that page and be very comfortable with their learning environment. I'm going to jump down to um, the parent or observer role. This is um, basically the same role as the student, the same view as the student, but you as a parent or guardian or learning coach um, are going to be able to see the exact same thing that your student sees with the exception of not being able to actually do any work <laughs> because we know that parents don't need to do their students' work. So Ms. Smith has three children, um, but we're gonna click on Charlie just so you can see that this is exactly what you saw before for Charlie. Um, so you're logged in as an observer. This is you as a parent or learning coach, but you're Charlie. If you need to go back to another student, you can do that by choosing another student here on the navigation. But you'll see everything here is the same with the exception of the family 411. And I like to point this out because this is a resource available to you as parents. Um, we know that there's, that this is new, this is different, and this session hopefully will be helpful. There's an orientation course built into the platform that you'll be assigned and you and your student should take that course together and kind of learn how to navigate and work through the platform. But this is another resource that is available to you as family. Um, it has topics like, how do you set up a learning space at home? What is needed? What's a good area? Um, what about a family plan? This is new for your student, or maybe it's not, but let's make sure the family's on board and understands the rules and the, um, you know, how to support the students who are learning at home. I always like to point out this creating a daily schedule. I think this is really important. Um, you're not going to have a bell ring and go to the next class like you would in a traditional brick and mortar building. Um, you need to create a schedule based on when your student has sessions with teachers, when the classes take place, when he learns best or she learns best. Maybe she reads really well in the morning and does math really well at night. Okay, create a schedule around that. Um, but this is a resource, again, that I just encourage you to take a look at. How do you accommodate uh, an appointment or music lessons? How do you accommodate multiple students? We hear from families that when they create a schedule at the beginning of the year, it may not be perfect and they may have to change it. They may realize that, you know what, having language arts every day isn't ideal and so I um, am going to maybe switch it up a little bit and have some language arts in the morning and some in the afternoon. So again, just understand that you, the way your students learn and how that might work. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you here is I'm actually gonna log out and I'm gonna log in as an administrator. Um, this is principal. Um, this is what your teachers and your administrators are looking at when they're understanding how your students are doing. This is a dashboard that will show all of the students enrolled in the program and all of the courses that they're enrolled in, how they're doing. How are they doing performance wise? Are they are they passing? Are they at risk of not doing so well? Are they failing? Let's look at these two kids that are at risk, um, Jason and Charlie. They both have a 75 in their course. That's a little concerning. Teachers are going to reach out to those students and talk with them about that. What about from a pace perspective? You remember that calendar. That calendar is going to schedule the, the course activities out through the semester. Well, what if your student starts falling behind and isn't keeping up? This dashboard, that your teachers and your administrators are looking at are gonna tell them that um, right now it's the beginning of the semester, everybody's doing great, but there's one kiddo, Kiersey, she's behind. Um, so I might need to reach out to her and kind of nudge her along. Um, they look at objective mastery and how the students are doing against all the objectives within the courses. So they're monitoring your students' performance on a regular basis by seeing all this data and ensuring that they're being successful. And if they're not, they're reaching out to them and they're going to make an appointment with them to talk with them about their progress and, and support them as they need to. So that is a very, very high level view of Pearson Connexus. Again, there is an orientation course that you will be assigned. I really encourage you and your family to take a look at that, um, spend a little bit of time, feel comfortable in the platform. It's, it's a little different than a traditional classroom, of course. Um, and so just really spend some time getting to, you know, getting to understand how this works go into that family 411 and read through some of those things um, because this is, this is a great way for your students to learn. Um, but there, you know, and there are some resources available to support you, including the staff at the district. So I'm gonna stop sharing and um, 
guess we can kind of tackle some questions. Yeah. So I, um, thank you, Mary Beth. I've been keeping track of most of the questions in the chat. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and call a couple of those out and um, perhaps you, between you and um, the, between the two of you, hopefully you guys can provide some answers on that. So I'm just going to start from the top of what I've got and go from there. Um, one of the questions asked, if a student is signed up for band and returns face to face, will the virtual students still have a remote option? So with that, the students, when they return, if so let's say they have band on their schedule in terms of remote learning um, and then go back, students that would be signed up for band would have that chance to go back for that one hour and then continue working on their virtual classes for the remainder of their classes. Great, thank you. And um, when will, uh, do you happen to know when the students will be getting their course schedule? That one popped up a couple times. Absolutely. So we're working with all the counselors at the secondary buildings right now and the mentors will be communicating schedules when they reach out to all the families to share with them what was on the scheduling cards to ensure that that was what we want to continue to work on moving forward. So we've collected all the schedules from the secondary schools and then the mentors are going to communicate with all the families next week, those schedules and then any adjustments that we want to make. Great, and I think that answers a question that just came into the chat then. Um, someone just asked if there was an option to change electives. What I understand is that you're saying that there should be an option for them to still make adjustments if they needed to. Oh, absolutely. We'll definitely have options for students to change those electives, um, especially when you go from brick and mortar to virtual. They might choose something different because we are in a virtual setting. Great. And, um, there was a question about um, about the Chromebooks and when they might be getting that or when the information might be available. Absolutely, we're continuing to work on our Chromebooks. Um, I would like all the families just to look for communication that will go out here in the next couple of days in regards to Chromebooks and how we're gonna be uh, dis distributing them to all of the families for the beginning of the school year. We'll look for communication tomorrow or early next week. Thank you. And um, a couple of families have asked now about when they'll have access to the program. Um, many are anxious to get their hands on it prior to the first day of school if possible. Um, so what does that look like? So we're working to get the login information for the students right now put in the system as well as their classes. Um, I don't believe they can start their classes until the first day of school as when they're put in the platform. Uh, we utilize the first day of the semester as well as the end of the semester. There are some additional online supports that families can go on and I put some resources on the website for you to kind of go and observe the online platform to see what it's all about and law not really log in but just see all the resources that there are but in terms of logging in early we don't have that capability because the students wouldn't be starting until then i would like to let the families know that i've been working with all the mentors and talking with them about when we start the beginning of the school year to make sure that we're conscious of that of working with the families in terms of understanding the platform, learning the platform at first, so we can then be successful during the school year, rather than trying to go 100 miles an hour, making sure that we're supporting those students and the families of how they're utilizing the platform. Thank you. And will there be a separate virtual Clarkston eBlast sign up on Clarkston calendar for announcements, or is it only going to be within the program, the Pearson Connexus program? I'll work with um, Mary Allen in terms of that information of how we share things out. We're going to continue to share things out via email. Um, I'll be sending things out to families. This won't be your only opportunity for a training. This won't be your only chance to hear from me and to get additional information. I'll continue during the semester to utilize my mentors and my staff here to share information out in regards to eBlast and everything. I'll work with Mary Allen and the central office staff here for that. Thank you. And um, we've had some questions about um, just the pacing of the courses. Um, some questions related to, you know, if the student completes their work in four days versus five days, 
Um, is that acceptable or what does that look like for them? And then also, is there um, an opportunity for additional progress in addition to what they may already be taking if they, if they complete sooner? Perfect. Absolutely. There's opportunities for families to and students to work within a four day, four rather than five days. Everything uh, Mary Beth talked about in terms of that progress and everything, the students will be able to see where they're at with their classes, what's due, what's coming up. So if a student was ahead, absolutely, they could take some time um, to really Take maybe a day off, maybe a long weekend. If it was a family trip somewhere, um, you could tell the students just get ahead with your work so when we're on the family trip, you don't have to work. Now, with that being said, let's say they didn't catch up within those four days, they could have that opportunity to work on the weekend because it is virtually. Um, so yes, there's that opportunity to finish early and get ahead with their schoolwork. Wonderful. And um, there was a question about supply. So um, this might be a joint question for both you and Mary Beth, perhaps. Um, but the specific question was, since the list of supplies is by teacher they would have in brick and mortar, um, where should they look for any supplies that they might need? In so in the, in the backpack for each course, if they click on material course materials, it will designate if they need any materials. It may say that you need some things that are around the house, um, like string or a ruler, um, or it might suggest that you need something else. Um, but, but in general, it's pretty common as to what you would need in, um, in your general grade for a, a school supply list. So when your courses are assigned to you, you can look in there. Thank you. And um, there was a question about video lessons for um, specifically math lessons, but I think it probably applies to other courses as well. Um, are there going to be video lessons either by, um, by the teacher, like a, a live lesson of some sort provided to the students or recorded for them? So in the platform, I do believe Mary Beth shared some of the things that are in there from videos and everything. In terms of live lessons, we're gonna utilize the Clarkston teacher mentors for that additional support. And it really connects with another question down below of how they're gonna interact with others. We're gonna use Google um, or some type of video conferencing for that interaction in the live lesson. Obviously, we would love to have them in front of, or in a small group and within a building, but for right now, we're gonna utilize that online version where let's say we had three or four students struggling with one area. Just like in a traditional brick and mortar school, the teacher would pull them back. For a virtual, we would just invite them to a meet like this or have it individually. Um, we also talked about that social emotional side of things and a question just came up about that. We're gonna utilize the Google Meet, the video conferencing for that type of interaction with the students. Thank you. Um, so there was a question earlier about um, accounting for the summer break. Um, specifically, do the, the courses or the program have any built-in review from the prior year's class? I think maybe talking about potentially addressing any gaps and making sure that the student is placed correctly might be might be what we're leading at. So with the online platform, if a teacher was to notice a student was struggling um, with what they were working on, that teacher mentor could then take additional content to support that student ahead of time. So if they were in a algebra course and due to being away from school for a period of time and then the summer break, they were really struggling in that area, that mentor could really move into one of two directions. One would be assigning additional work for support to get the student caught up like we would in a traditional brick and mortar or pulling them in and doing some additional small group work to make sure they have the foundation information to then move forward. Great. And I'm just scrolling through the chat now, pulling out questions that have come in as we've started answering um, some Q&A here. So um, if the virtual turns out to not be the, the, the best fit for the child, will it be possible to change from um, distance learning to face-to-face? -to -face? 
So at the semester break, we will have an option for families if the virtual for really one of two things. If things clear up and families were interested in moving back into the brick and mortar like our plan is, then absolutely at the semester break, that'll be an option for families. We'll have a notification where the mentors will let you know ahead of time. And we would just need that advance notice so we could adjust staffing moving into the second semester. And um, I'll toss this one out to both of you. Um, can we use our own computer or Chromebook? There were some questions earlier about um, utilizing Apple devices as well. Um, so maybe just speaking to a little bit of, of what you can use outside of maybe the school provided Chromebook if, if they chose to, I suppose. In terms of the school standpoint, absolutely. If a student was to wish to use their own device in terms of the online platform, they would just need to make sure they had it was internet capable and they would be more than happy to use their own device with it at home. Thank you. And there was a question about class start dates and we have a couple of varying answers from the audience. So I just wanna clarify, what, what is the class start date for everyone? September 8th. All right, put some clarity to that. Um, there are some questions about how do we add multiple, maybe multiple emails for a parent account, um, kind of being information being pulled from parent view. Um, basically, I, I think some people are wondering if they can have multiple observer roles um, access the program. Mary Beth, I guess you could, um, within the parent observer, I can set up multiple parent observers yeah. in the platform, correct? Yes. Absolutely. If, if the um, child is living, you know, it has two different homes, then those two different parents can absolutely have two different addresses. All right. And there was a question submitted. Can I, could a student focus on half their courses for half the semester and the other half for the second half of their semester? Absolutely. Uh, my only recommendation would be try to add in some classes that are maybe a little bit more challenging with some that they can find a little bit more success with. I would hate to have a student hold off on working on their more challenging classes till the end of the semester and then struggle to have everything completed. And I apologize if you've already addressed this, but we've had a couple of questions come in about IEPs and additional supports that might be provided for those students. Absolutely. So we've, we've gone over that a little bit within our couple board meetings, but I'll try to give a quick overview. We will have additional staff available to help students with their IEPs. We will continue to meet um, those individual students needs. So let's say we had a student working within the online platform um, within their algebra class, they would have not only the mentor to connect with to get additional support, they would also have their um, special education teacher there for additional support. Thank you. And here's a, a pretty pointed question. How will the transition from online to in-person at the semester break look if the student decides to take a class such as an AP class that are scheduled as one semester in, in Pearson, but two semesters in person? Um, they specifically noted AP government, AP microeconomics. Um, would they just need to complete half of it by the semester break? What would that look like? Absolutely. Uh, we've been talking about that with the team here, and we are going to work with dividing that up to ensure that we're aligned as much as possible as the student goes back to at the semester break. The great thing is with the virtual platform, um, regardless of how much is completed within the AP platform, um, the new teacher within the AP class, let's say we were to go brick and mortar could have that additional data of what standards were covered, what information was taken care of and how that student did to then continue to progress and move forward. And there was one about uh, which one do students use the Pearson Connexus or the Observer app? 
um, or observer role. So the observer is actually specifically for um, the families or somebody overseeing the students. So the student would utilize their own login to access Pearson Connexus that is separate from the, the observer role. And then there was one also, Mary Beth, maybe you want to take this one. Um, how many students does each mentor have or could they have? Um, that's probably Ken. Or yeah, Ken. I'll take that. We're looking at a ratio of around 30 to 1 for uh, students. So 30 students for one mentor um, consistent within the classrooms in terms of that support. That would allow that teacher to offer the individual support for the students daily. Right. And is there any plan to get students together regularly to interact similar to Wolf Pine? Um, there, there's some concerns about social isolation or just making sure that, that students can interact with one another. Yes, we do have plans for that. Uh, we were just talking today in regards to some additional platforms and, and some things we can do um, as early as the elementary as well as high as the um, secondary students in the high school, finding a way for them to interact, even if it is a way for them to connect with other students taking their online classes or similar classes, that they could work together. We often see that within the classroom, that that interaction between students is huge. Um, continuing to utilize that in an online setting is absolutely possible. Students could work together using Google Meet, using FaceTime for that interaction, and we're also going to plan additional things so those students can see each other and have similar things like wolf time where they're interacting together. I have a question about OSTC. Is that Pearson or not? So that would be one of those questions and I'm sorry, Sarah, I just see it pop up a couple times. So I'm gonna jump in. Um, students that are in OSTC will have a blended schedule where they'll keep those OSTC classes on their schedule and then they'll have additional classes through Pearson Connexus. So their OSTC classes will not be part of this platform. That will be part of the OSTC um, distance learning plan. And then the virtual students through Pearson Connexus will have those extra classes in there. Students will have one mentor for all six classes, but they will have additional teachers of record, which will be uh, teachers that specialize within that content area for them to support. Thank you. Um, I think this one's come up a couple times. I believe I saw one referenced earlier about PE. How will PE classes look in this environment? I'll take that one. Um, so really it's, um, it's a student log. So there will be um, a description about what the student needs to do in PE and they will need to log that on a regular basis um, and report in to their activities. All right, there's a question around the, the plan for testing if students are unable to return to in-person learning during the M-STEP testing. What is the plan? As of right now, that is an MDE um, decision in terms of what, we, what we're going to be able to do. If we continue, if we were to go back to the in-person like we'd like to, um, absolutely, uh, we would come up with a plan for the M-STEP testing. Let's say at semester break, you continued to be a virtual student. Um, even if we went back and there was M-STEP testing, what would happen is, is we would then schedule the M-STEP testing. Uh, we would utilize some home buildings and everything, and all of the students would continue to participate in the M-STEP, the PSAT, and the SAT. Thank you. And are students able to take um, some classes through Clarkston Virtual and others through the distance learning option? We had some programs that we that we were able to work with, some specialized programs like OSTC, which allowed students to be part of both the OSTC program and Clarkston Virtual. Great. And it looks like there's some concern about um, someone reaching out in regards to selecting classes. 
Um, some families haven't heard back yet. I think we addressed this maybe earlier, but if you might speak to that just quickly again. Absolutely. So we're working with all the counselors in the secondary buildings um, to pull all those schedules. Your mentor that will be reaching out to you will have a copy of those schedules um, when they reach out to you next week. And what will happen is one of two things. Um, the mentor will go over that schedule with the family and the family will say, absolutely, that's the direction we want to go. Or there might be some changes to it. Once those changes are made or are reflected, uh, we would then just have to go in and adjust them in our online platform for it. So if families were perfect for it, that would be great. We're also going to have to make sure we focus on, especially in 912, those graduation requirements. So there may be classes in that schedule that have to stay on there to make sure we're moving towards graduation. Thank you. And will students be grouped together with teams such as like ABCs so that they could establish some relationships with their, their students through offline work? We did group students in a variety of ways. We, we grouped students based on some of the classes that they were taking. Um, we grouped some students moving from one building to another. So if they were moving from an elementary building to the middle school, we tried to pay attention to that. Uh, we also have it focused where the mentor has those 30 students that they're working with, very similar to the Wolf Time, uh, very similar to that homeroom situation where that teacher and mentor can build a relationship as well as those students can build a relationship with each other. Thank you. And do students ever meet in person with their mentors? Our goal is absolutely to have that be an opportunity. Um, right now, we're unable to do move in that direction, but as we start to open things up, uh, there will be some options for meeting with the mentor face-to-face -face if families feel comfortable with that and students um, feel comfortable with it, um, as well as in small groups with the mentor. Great. And when students return to in-person learning, um, how is the grading in their GPA going to be impacted, if at all, in parent view? Um, is it going to show up virtual learning as a completed credit? What, I guess what will that look like? It'll show up on their transcript as a class that they took. So if they were taking Algebra 1A the first semester when they finished it, they would have their grade in Algebra 1A and that would be transferred over to their transcript at the high school or junior high and then transfer over to the high school as part of their graduation requirement. So it would be, very, it would be identical to that of a distance learning or a seated class. Thank you. And will Clarkston Virtual be compatible with CSM Tech? So Clarkston Virtual will not have CSM Tech classes, but CSM Tech was one of the programs that we were working with to ensure students could continue to work in that, but also be part of the virtual program. Thank you. And do Clarkston Virtual parents still utilize ParentView? ParentView will be available. But the information, majority of the information that families will be accessing will be through the online platform uh, with Pearson Connexus. So you'll be able to see that pace and progress that Mary Beth was talking about. So Parent View will be available, but the information in regards to the student progress and learning will be through Pearson Connexus. Great. And um, one, one individual asks specifically about a construction tech program that their child's been in for the last two years. It's an, a two hour block with math combined. Um, given that this is a, such a hands on course, what does that look like now and uh, for virtual and or distance learning? Well, it wouldn't be part of the virtual as a virtual option, uh, but those individual teachers will work to make the best environment possible within the distance learning as we start the school year. Great, and how will counseling work? They'll still have counselors and they'll still have available availability to their counselors through this, um, especially as we move between virtual distance and back to seated classrooms. All right, and is Pearson Connexus um, available on iOS devices? I'll take this one. 
Um, not, it does not function well on an iPad. Um, you, I personally have a MacBook and um, I've used it there. Um, there is some Flash embedded in the courses and you will need to enable Flash in your browser. Um, I'm gonna say that again. You're gonna need to enable Flash in your browser. I'm gonna say it one more time. You're gonna need to enable Flash in your browser. Um, all of the Flash will be removed by the end of this calendar year and actually kind of throughout the school year or throughout the semester, I should say, but um, we will provide that workaround information to um, the district and they can share that out if you need it. But it, the iPad it, it is not ideal. I would not recommend it, full transparency. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, how, how is test, um, how is comprehension tested? Once a student reads the content and answers questions, how do they ensure they comprehend the lesson? Is there, so there, are, there are formative assessments, meaning kind of quick checkpoints throughout the course. And there are summative assessments, meaning maybe unit tests, your um, end of, you know, midterm tests, end of um, course tests as well. So all of that is built into the course itself. And you as a parent will be able to see that. Thank you. And do science classes offer hands-on activities? I think there was one earlier as well about labs. Potentially. The labs are virtual. Um, so you'll be able to, to see the virtual labs. They're, they're actually pretty cool. Um, but everything is within the, the platform. Great. And will you all follow CCS school calendar for holiday breaks, et cetera? Absolutely. The great thing with virtual, though, is you do have some flexibility within there. Um, flexibility, I mean, if we get to Thanksgiving and you're behind a little bit, you could always utilize that time to catch up. Um, but that will be a holiday break for the mentors as well. Great. And will students be able to take a course such as Spanish 5 that are not offered by Clarkston virtual? We do have capabilities of utilizing additional online providers for some of the classes like those higher level, higher level foreign language classes. And I can work with Mr. Rocco in terms of that individual student to see what we could do. The only downfall to that would be you would have multiple platforms to log into, but more importantly, we'd have the capability to support them in a virtual format. And this one um, has, I think it may have come up earlier, but how can both homes um, come create an account on Pearson Connexus and more than one email added for the mentor or school emails if it's not going off of parent view? Well, communication can go off of parent view. Um, so we can still utilize that. The, in terms of multiple parents in the online platform, so the parent observer is set up with a separate email. So your, your, your child will have an email and will have a username and password to log in, uh, similar to many things that we have right now um, online. So they will utilize their individual online login to log in and work through their classes. With the um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mary Beth, with the parent observer, each parent could set up their own parent observer account tied to their individual email and be able to log in and see how that their child is doing and keep up with them. Even if they live in the same home, but they're continuing to live busy lives, we can set up parent observers for multiple family members to support them. Correct. Right. And can students retake a test or do test corrections? So with the assessments in the system, there is a set number of, so if they were to take a quiz and not do so well on it, they do have the ability to retake that. Um, if a student was to continue to um, not do so well on an assessment, um, it would prompt them to go back to their mentor and that mentor would then continue to help and work with them to ensure that they're not just guessing on the quiz and that they're going through. Um, that can be done through some additional note taking or some work with the mentor to ensure the students are moving forward. Great, and there was a question about snow days. Will there, will there be snow days? 
there, there'll probably still be snow days in terms of the Michigan weather and some transportation issues in terms of students with the snow days. Um, and a snow day, my mentors would have that. And I would encourage the students on a snow day to go outside, build a snowman, go sledding, and go have all those fun things. Great. And uh, will there be midterm exams? So there are tests built into the course throughout the course. Um, they may or may not be midterm, uh, but they're likely unit tests. Um, and the district can determine how they want um, that to work against a midterm grade. Great. And there were um, a couple of of people interested in the leadership class. Is this something that's offered through the virtual learning? Within the online platform, we don't have the leadership um, classes. How are honors classes offered um, or translated to the virtual classes such as honors biology for junior high students? So within our, co within our course catalog uh, through Pearson Connexus, we have not only the traditional courses, but we have additional classes. I'm not quite sure the wording on them, Mary Beth. You may have to help me on this one. Um, but we do have like fundamental classes for to getting students ready, as well as advanced classes in our content areas. Right. So there are um, kind of general core classes. There are um, GT classes from, I believe, third to eighth grade, and then honors in AP and ninth through 12. Um, the great thing about virtual, and you'll have to work with your mentor and your counselors and the leadership at the district, um, but there is a lot of you know, flexibility in how your student is enrolled depending on their grade level. Um, and again, working with the district, but if a student is a third, or not third grader, because you're middle school and high schoolers, if your student's a seventh grader, but maybe reading on an eighth grade level, there's flexibility to be able to address that in virtual. Um, you'd need to work with obviously your placement, you know, during the placement process. Thank you. And there's been a few questions about um, tests and quizzes, just making sure that students are, um, or I guess, are they able to use their notes? Are they closed book? Um, how are we ensuring that there's no cheating taking place? From our perspective, um, we hope that students are being honest. Um, we are gonna know, your teachers are gonna know how your student has done throughout the course. So if your student has done well during a course and during the, you know, the formative assessments and then does well on the regular assessment, then you know, there's, there's that honor, that integrity that we're trusting your student. If your student has done poorly throughout the class and suddenly gets 100% on a, a test, that might be something a teacher takes a look at. Um, so that's from my perspective, from the Pearson perspective, the student's not locked down in a test. Um, they, they need to be honest, just like when you're, you know, kind of taking a test at home during the regular um, semester, you might be home doing some work. Um, I think the teachers are probably checking in and ensuring that the students are doing their own work. The teachers can see how much time the student spent in the class. So if the student is not spending a ton of time, you saw um, during the, in the grade book, um, where you can see how much time a student is spending in the lessons, if they're not spending a lot of time, but they're getting 100%, hmm, teacher might take a look at that. So there's kind of some checks and balances built into that. Um, but we really encourage your students to be honest and, and, and you know, maintain the integrity of, of the concept. Can and I'll work with my mentors on that. Um, I've been working with virtual for about five years now, so I'll continue to work with my mentors that we're bringing on to support them with that, to support them with additional training to look into that pace and progress, uh, support them within some of the easy things that we can do as educators, which would be cut and paste in Google, and it can show us where things come from. Um, so we'll work with that. We'll work with the students on plagiarism inter as well as uh, those things that they might think they can get away with, but we have some capabilities to work with them on. Great. And will tests and quizzes be solely multiple choice, um, meaning will students have opportunity for partial credit? Um, so they, they are multiple choice, they're true, false, they're write-ins, they're short answers, I mean, it really varies. 
So um, I don't really know what they mean by partial credit. I think if they get an answer wrong, it's wrong. Um, it's really up to the district to determine if they can retake something. Um, but there's there are multiple mediums, uh, types of questions for assessments because not every student does well with short answer. Not every student does well with multiple choice or true false. Um, so it, it, we really kind of mix that up. I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. We also have the flexibility within the mentor if the student was struggling with something, um, but the mentor pulled them aside and worked with them on that. That mentor would also have the capability to adjust that grade in the grade book. So they might have failed a quiz, but they're, just like in the traditional school, that teacher pulls that student back. In this situation, it would be virtually. They could work with them and then adjust that score moving forward or allow them to take the quiz again. How many hours a day are students expected to spend on their classes? I would say we, I don't have an expectation in terms of the hour, number of hours a day a student has to sit in front of the computer and work. I will say that my mentors are going to work with the students in terms of having a healthy balance of not trying to sit down for multiple hours at a time. I know personally um, I'll be working with my, my two boys in terms of setting up a uh, rotation and a schedule to do some physical activity to get away from the computer screen. Um, I do know in the beginning of the semester, just like everything, we will have a learning curve. We will have a learning curve in terms of understanding the platform and how to manipulate it, understanding when do I need to contact my mentor for things to be reset. I think in the beginning, it might take a little bit longer to get things accomplished, but as we move through the semester and as we continue to work with our mentor, the amount of time it'll take to move through some of the things will lessen. I would say in terms of the amount of time, we're going to use those assignments and we're going to use those assignments in terms of those due dates to really determine the amount of time working. If your child is extremely struggling in an area and spending hours and hours and hours and hours, that's a conversation with the mentor. Maybe we need to adjust the content. Maybe we need to adjust the class. The last thing we would want is a student trying to spend four to five hours a day just in one class. I would say on, on average, you're going to be looking at maybe Mary Beth, 45 minutes for a day within the class. Um, generally, what we see is about with, again, this is with like maybe once a week um, class, live class time. And you can take this or leave it. It's really about five to six hours a day, um, just depending on your student. It really depends on your student. Some students might accelerate quickly through this. Some students might take extra time, um, but there's lots of flexibility. Some students might work for a couple hours, take a break, and then work for some hours later because they have a job um, or they just learn better with a break. But I would say, you know, I mean, just like a traditional school day, the work is similar. So it's, you know, five to six hours depending on your student. And also, depending on the content area, obviously your right. algebra, your history class is going to take longer than some of your electives. Mm -hmm. Will the mentor be from um, from the specific school that the, the student's from, or could it be from any Clarkston school? They will be from any Clarkston school. We but we do have Clarkston mentors that were from the elementary buildings, from the middle school, the junior high, and the high school. So if a, if a parent has multiple students, um, for instance, this one with a sixth grader uh, will they, and an eighth grader, will they have a SMS mentor and also a CJHS mentor then? With a student in the sixth and the eighth grade, they would have different mentors. And the reason behind that would be the social interaction with other students, their grade level. 
I would want that sixth grade student to have a mentor with other sixth grade students so they could have that social interaction of interacting. But also it allows that mentor to really focus in on that grade level and the classes that that student is taking. And the same thing with the eighth grader. We would want them to have that class and that group as well as that additional academic support. And is there an opportunity to change mentors if requested? It really depends on the situation. It really depends on what's going on. Um, our mentors have spent a great deal of time um, dividing the students up, utilizing the information we have from every avenue possible to ensure that the teachers are um, equitable with the number of students, but also where the students are coming from. Changing them afterwards would be challenging, um, but I'm always open to have a conversation. If OTC is distance learning, what will it look like when the district goes back face to face? If OSTC stays distance learning, then OSTC will have that distance learning for the student. We, if we were to go back face to face, then that student would have, um, let's say semester break comes, we have an OSTC student doing OSTC in virtual. They decide to stop doing virtual and go back to either distance or face to face in the building. Um, but OSTC, OSTC stayed distance. They would have partially distance on their schedule as well as partially in person or distance from the district side of it. Great. And how, how do I ensure that my student still gets banned? Is there something that needs to be completed before school starts? Do they let the mentor know? That mentor is going to reach out to you. Um, you'll be receiving information from them. I've worked with, been working with all my mentors every day this week. Um, I've got an amazing group of teachers from around the district. I'm extremely excited of taking on this opportunity of working with a virtual setting. Um, so with that, they've done a lot of work in terms of working as a grade level, um, getting ready for that first week of school. Part of that is that interaction, that first interaction uh, starting next week. So what will happen is that interaction will be, they'll be sharing that schedule and let's say band isn't in there. We're gonna have to do everything we can to make sure that band is in there in a distance format, as well as the other classes that are on their schedule. Thank you. And um, for someone who signed up for all art electives at SMS, how does that play out with the virtual world? What will that look like for that student? We do have a variety of art electives available within Pearson Connections. Would they be the identical art electives? I can't guarantee that, but we do. Mary Beth, maybe you can speak to this a little bit, just some of those electives that we offer within art. Um, I would have to pull up the course list, so give me a second. Um, but I know there are like traditional art classes as well as classes that are more like art appreciation type classes. So give me a moment to pull the course list up. So I guess the answer would be, we, we may not be able to have the identical art classes, but we do have a wide variety of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on, I'm just pulling up real quick. Let's see. Um, so tiny, uh, let's see. So we're in middle. So middle school um, is more traditional art. Um, there is a digital art and design class. There's a photography class. Um, and then in high school, let's see. I mean, there are so many different electives in high school from game design to, I mean, there's just so many different types of art-ish type classes. Um, art history, art and world cultures, anthropology, which is not really art, a little bit of history. Um, so there's really, I mean, there really is a wide variety and you can work with the district to identify what's best for your child. And I, we do have the Pearson Connectors catalog on our website under Clarkston uh, Community Schools, Academics and Clarkston Virtual. There is a link for that catalog available for you to view. 
And um, there seems to be some concern about um, being contacted um, and filling out the Clarkston enrollment. It said that someone would be in contact, but they haven't heard. Um, and then another question just popped up also about um, just making sure that they're, they're enrolled since they haven't received any communication from the district yet. So I did have a handful of ad emails that bounced back uh, from the email address that was placed into the Google form where I had a couple that rather than doing the shift to for at, they just put the two in. I was able to adjust a few of them, but some of the email addresses I was unable to adjust. Um, but we are working through the front desk here um, at Clarkson Community Schools to ensure that if families filled it out, we have the proper information for them on file. Is there any way to have the description of the classes listed in the catalog as well? Can you have that right? I think, can you have that right? The course description list? Um, I don't believe I have it posted right now, but it's something I can post um, first thing tomorrow. Yep, I'll get that to you if you don't have it. If you could send it again, even if I, you've already sent it, I'd greatly appreciate it. Doing it right now. All right, Sarah, do you want to, we can pull the chat and answer any additional questions. Um, I think we're getting a little bit repetitive now and hopefully in the recording, people that can go back and listen to that and um, kind of hear the answers that we talked about. So before we end, I just want to, I've been going through the chat trying to stay live with it. In addition to all the questions, um, appreciate your time tonight. But I also wanna just put a big thank you out there. Uh, a lot of positive comments for the staff here in terms of at Clarkston Community Schools for um, what's happening. We really appreciate those comments that are being posted in there and they're not being ignored. Uh, that means a whole lot for not only myself, but also all the staff working here and all the programs. Wonderful. Well, if um, if they're if you're ready, Ken, we can end this tonight and let everybody get back to their families. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mary Beth. Thank you, Sarah, for put, hosting this, helping all the families out, get a, a fresh start on Pearson Connexus and everything. Once again, thank you all the families for participating, sharing your questions and everything. I'm looking forward to a great semester in school year. Thank you. Thank you.